if we agree that cybersecurity and risk mitigation should be built into every application, every business from its earliest days, then perhaps it becomes less about hiring cybersecurity specialists and it becomes more about training people to have these skills as a natural part of their job as developers, as UX designers, as, uh, as CEOs for that matter. This just becomes part of your education. Here in the United States, I can tell you that it's not really a core part of how people are being educated as they go through any of their professions. Everybody's sort of being educated in a specialty way. I don't know if that's different in the UK or if it's different around the world, but how would you advise all of us to be thinking about getting the next generation ready to step into these senior positions of responsibility, businesses, governments, and nonprofits, knowing that this, th this threat is never going away and we have to start building our systems with these threats in mind. Where is the right place to start educating people about what that means? And, and do you feel that there is either an education gap, a, a skill gap, or a specialty gap that our school systems and our college systems need to start addressing? This is a very uh, interesting topic. When I recruit people into our company, Everybody wants to be a full stack developer because that's the that that that's the buzzword. It's crazy. I can hire or we can engage full stack developers working in the Philippines or in Vietnam or, 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 or yeah, nominally in the Ukraine until very recently. We can engage very highly capable people at less than I have to pay my uh, my staff. And, but they don't get it because that's what the market that's what the market has peddled to them that the only thing that matters is being a full stack developer. What actually matters is being a software a professional software engineer in our industry that, and that and the skills you need as a professional software engineer uh, are the, 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 uh, if you look at something called Sophia plus skills framework for the information age, it's a chart. Oh, goodness, I haven't counted them. 300, 400 skills in it. It's a fold all. It goes all the way up your wall. Uh, it's all the different areas. And staff need to be engaged uh, to be a professional engineer who is going to be able to embrace all of these subject areas and design systems. You need to be able to cover a, a large number of those. So... Uh, but and un unless somebody's going to unless somebody's going to say actually uh i'm uh, i must hire someone who's qualified and therefore if i go and hire a cto that cto has got to have their own uh, um uh professional indemnity insurance they've got to have, be accountable for uh for the work that's going on underneath them and therefore they've got to be paid for it now, at the moment, if you uh, if you're a chairman of a of a quoted company, and you hire an accountant who's not uh, not uh, a chartered accountant, and it all goes wrong, you would be taken to the cleaners. You never work in the organized city again or in the finance sector again. Yet, strange enough, we have loads of failed IT systems, and no one oh well, they always fail. Well, they fail because they don't have the, they don't have a, a concept of professionalism all the way down the uh, down the curve and they don't have the concept of professionalism because they don't pay people enough and they don't pay and they don't make them account hold them accountable because they paid them enough to be accountable until we start to move in that direction you'll just have we'll continue with this cherry picking of skills i want to be one of those i want to be one of those and without the overall um, framework of skills to allow you to do the job properly um, and uh, so, the, so whatever we teach our children at school, if it's uh, or our young people at university, or our new joiners coming into the industry, unless it's within an overall fra governance framework that allows them to know where they work and understand the importance of engineering, and that they get paid um, for for the investment they make rather than just being rather than just churning out 10,000 lines of code a day uh, um, it's actually about it's about factoring in all these other factors 
then we are destined to carry on the same, uh, carry on doing things, making the same mistakes again. What do we need to do? It's all about methodology. It's all about standards. It's all about professionalism, and it's all about rewarding people. Uh, to, it's all about being able to measure people's performance and reward people uh, for great performance, uh, and not just for years served. And and if you can do that, then we'd create um then we'd create a uh, uh, an, a professional industry. Now there's some other things I think are really interesting, and I think government does have a place to play. Um, the particularly in the cyber security arena if the russians had done as much damage to us over the last few years um through with kinetic weapons lo lobbed into our country rather than the damage they've done with um cyber attacks we'd have been at war long we'd have been in the kinetic war long ago so uh, we need to put our cyber security onto a war footing essentially I don't know very much about the detail of how the Israelis work, but I think I get the sense that the Israeli, uh, the, the, uh, there are a lot of Israeli companies that um, develop their excellent technology because they're at war uh, and cyber is an existential threat to them. And you, when you see the speed at which the Estonians, sorry, not the, Estonians, the, the Ukrainians are turning around new capability, we take five years to not deliver a new radio system and uh, and the and the Ukrainians are only a month ahead of the Russians. So we need that we need to move at pace, but we need to do it securely. Click the link in the description of this video to access the full episode, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for videos like this, and subscribe to this show anywhere you get your podcasts.